in our prayer of confession. God has called us not to a set of beliefs, but to a relationship of trust. We are drawn to the Spirit whose will for us is life and its fullest. Attuned to that is good and true. We come now to confess that we have looked elsewhere for our salvation. A prayer of confession. Our Lord us now to our spirit, to your presence among us in this flesh. Together we confess that we have been busy with so many things that have been all on the cry of you. Sometimes our bad ideas have been all on the screen. As we do battle to correct others and as we seem to defend you, we have forgotten that your love is stronger than any force on earth. Forgive our mistrust of this power and draw us back into the family of disciples who are learning and who are loving in love. Amen. Respect our personal petitions. Assurance. God redeems us, whatever our circumstances, lifting our spirits and empowering us for great love. Amen. Now's the time for our joys and concerns, and I'd like to make a concern for Mark Osseus. He is our child of the sponsor in Haiti, and we have not gotten any word that that earthquake was followed up with a hurricane. We have our prayers for him and his family. Anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, yes, I've got a concern and I've got a joy. Well, we're we'll talking with a joy. I can't think maybe we're become, but we've taken up uh, folks in the parade. We had the first place folks in the rodeo parade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Congratulations. What was your evening? We took the Marbay truck and was going to run just now. We were running corn and we were in the parade. We won the first place vote. I didn't mean, have to pay the judges or anything. Just a bag of cornmeal. And I've got a concern. My brother Dwayne said that Candace or Cal got him down and rammed him in the fence didn't break any ribs but bruised him up bad and skinned him up and he's going to be about two months of beginning to grow with his skin back on his arm for the throw it all off and have to stay in for the coach now. Right. We pray for successes and for healing. Lord have mercy. Yeah. It's a joy to have Lowell and Priscilla here today, our first cousin. Did y'all drift all the way from Nix? <laughs> Welcome, we're glad y'all are here. I have a niece in South Carolina, Melissa Freeman, who is in critical condition in the hospital. For healing, for comfort. Lord have mercy. In yeah, our prayers. Well, maybe what you would did you win with the pecan, but that's not until later. They don't announce that until later down the line. I keep saying y'all are. Yeah, well, I did win y'all stayed. <laughs> okay. Let us pray. Dear God, as we go through our time, let us find peace and comfort within your presence as we go through our struggles. We know that you are there with us and that you share in our struggles and you share with our hopes and you share with Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Sharon's going to give our scripture reading that comes from the book of Joshua. It's Joshua 24, verses 1 through 2a and 14 through 18. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Sheshem, and some of the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel. Now therefore, revere the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness, and put away the gods which your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day, whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites and those whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And he did these great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Thank you. God. And our song for you today is Psalm 36 on page 771. We we'll use a different response, but the words are uh, almost the same as the second line of the response in the book. Continue your steadfast love to me. And it goes like this. Oh. shadow of your wings. They may feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life, and in your life do we see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to know those who know you, and your salvation to the heaven of our Lord. Continue your
be seated. I checked the nerve area in part there. Does it still work? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, in the liturgy that we usually give, especially during the off month in the new prophet, this week the prophet should say to give you different choices of what to do. And Pastor Tim, when he started out, he was going to use Joshua and Ephesians 610, which is an equivalent. However, I've read Ephesians 610 several times and I've struggled with it, so I went with something easier, so I went back to John. <laughs> we're going to be doing John 5, 6, 69, and John 5, 6, uh, 56, 69, chapter 6, and that goes back to the book. That's where the Now, John is John chapter 6. Jesus is very busy for this. Okay, this is fairly long. In their liturgy, a lot of pastors don't like preaching on it because John chapter 6 goes for five Sundays. Five Sundays that they cover just chapter 6. Now, the first part of John 6, y'all are all familiar with chapter 6, is when he fed the 5,000. Remember, Pastor spoke about that. We had uh, five loaves of bread, two fish, and had a pretty good sized fish. Jackie Hall made it. Figure 6.6 .6 pounds of fish per person. That'd be about 3,000 pounds. So two fish are pretty good size. And it went a long way. The next thing that Jesus does in chapter 6 is then he goes down to the lake and his disciples go out and he walks on the water. That's the second Sunday. And the third Sunday, he makes the first of the seven I am statements that are in the Gospel of John. He says, I am the bread of life. Y'all familiar with hearing me throughout the year? It's going on. Now, the next study is a little more difficult because when he spells the bread of life and he keeps, continues to follow, he goes on down and continues to travel, and they're following him. And they're wanting that bread. They're wanting daily bread. They're wanting the manna that Moses delivered out of the wilderness. They're wanting daily bread. And Jesus says, No, I'm not daily bread. I'm the you choose me, you choose bread for life. You choose bread for life. And that's the next thing Jesus does. So in this part of John, in uh, our section, this is a, a difficult task for the people to believe, a difficult message for the people to believe. We'll see what y'all think about it when it starts out. So this is John chapter 6, 56 through 69. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him just as the living father sent me and I live because of the father so the one who feeds on me will live because of me this is the bread that came down from heaven your forefathers ate manna and died that he who feeds on this bread will live forever he said this while teaching in the synagogue of attorney on hearing it many of the disciples said this is hard teaching who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? What if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit, and they are life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled him. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have all the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One. Word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. God. I'll make just a little notes here to kind of follow along. I read several things. A lot of the commentary, a lot of things you read, a lot of people take this to believe that Jesus talked about taking the communion. Bread, wine, representative of uh, the body, blood of Christ. And we've done that through the years. But when you when the John 
the hand that's not the gospel than it has the gospel gospel. John is a gospel gospel. John is writing this 60, 70 years after this took place. And John's not trying to tell the story. He's not trying to get the history correct. What John's trying to talk about is the meaning. What did Jesus mean? What was Jesus' purpose? That's what John is trying to tell, tell us. Okay? So I've read two commentaries. The one is a fairly common one, the William Barclay commentary. And one is a, a, a commentary from a Lutheran pastor. And what they're saying is what God is talking here, what Jesus is talking about here, is when you eat his flesh, you are living his life. You are taking his life and putting that life into you. You are choosing, you're making a choice to take Jesus' life to follow Jesus. That is, that's the idea. So whenever we make this decision, when we're talking about eating Jesus' flesh, that means we are going to make the choice to follow Jesus. We're going to do the good and the bad. Jesus doesn't promise all good. He goes along with you're going to have struggles. What they're saying is when you come, when you feel beat down, you feel broken, you feel times are hard, then what you can know is that Jesus came here humanity of God, he came here and lived that life. When you read in the Bible, when you read Jesus didn't have an easy time of it. He got broken down, he got beaten down by life, by the people around him and by the things that happened. And so what you do is you make a choice in your life. You take the flesh of Christ and if you're taking this humanity are going to agree to live his life, make the choices that he makes, guide your choices, his choices, guide your choices. When you drink the blood, that is, blood and life, throughout the Old Testament, Deuteronomy, and different places where they talk about spiritual laws and those sort of things, blood represents life. So when you take his life, you are taking his life into you wholeheartedly taking Jesus into your life and you're saying that you're going to follow him. You're going to, you make choices, you make your decisions during the day. There's a bumper sticker that says, what would Jesus do? So you're going to let that guide your decisions. Okay, and sometimes that's difficult. The great thing is that we're going to learn later on even with Joshua is that when we're not perfect, and I know what I'm by far from, what I do have is the opportunity to see that I was wrong and go see forgiveness in Christ. And we were able to do that. And that is what it means to take the flesh and the blood of Christ and you take it in your life. Now, we're in chapter 6 later on. They're going to talk about the, John is going to talk about the last soul. Now, John has a different variation of the last soul. He does the foot washing. Where everyone else has a meal. But John actually does the, has the foot washing before he sets down. And y'all remember the deal about the foot washing? We usually do it on Monday, Thursday. You sat down and Peter says, Oh, Lord, he says, You can't wash my feet. I'm not worthy to have you wash the feet. And Jesus says, I want to wash your feet because they need cleaning. And then the expectation is after I wash your feet, you're going to go out and wash. Decision gets represented by the communion of the Holy Spirit. Different thing. So we have to make a choice. Now, what happened in John, the lesson I just read, is several of the people that were following him for the bread of life, when he says, You have to live my life, they said, That's too, that's too hard. It's too hard of a teaching. I'm not, I don't think I'm left. That's a little bit misleading because they're talking about disciples. And disciples are following <laughs> He's not losing the 12 disciples that we're thinking of. Because at the end, when people are leaving and saying, I can't follow this teaching, I'm going to just go live my life, he 
He asked the twelve, are y'all going to stay? And they said, yes. So we made this choice. We are going to do this. <laughs> they chose life in Christ. Now, Joshua, Sharon read what was in the liturgy. It went from 2 to, what was it, 13? We had a pretty good skin in there from where she and what Joshua did when he started out, he's talking about where they began. And he didn't start with Abraham. He started with Abraham's father. Now, we don't know a lot about Abraham's father, except that Abraham's father worshipped several gods. He did not believe in just our God. Abraham was the first one to have the relationship that said there's only one God. He's telling the Jews started, the people of Israel started with worshiping more than one God. They became people that worship one God. They, he, and then he goes through and tells them each and every step that God did for them, bringing them out of Egypt, leading them through the Holy Land. I mean, the wilderness for the 40 years. Moses, they got to the Holy Land. Joshua led them across the river. And then once they got there, he settled and they had peace and God made that uh, happen for them. And then after he tells them all the great things that God has done, he says, you have a choice. You have a choice. My choice, and my family's choice is, has anyone ever heard this saying? We will serve the Lord, right? And you see that. Some people put signs in their yard, some people have in their house. So signs in the house where he said we will serve the Lord. Then he asked all the people that had gathered to speak to him. He said, what is what's y'all's choice? And they said, we're going to serve the Lord. And that's where the liturgy ends our lesson. However, if you drag out Joshua and keep reading it, what Joshua says to them is, no, you're not. They said, we're going to serve the Lord. He said, no, you're not. It's too hard. You're not going to be able to do it. It's going to be too hard for you. And they said, no, no, no. We can do it. We can do it. We're going to do this. Joshua said, okay. Now, if you're saying this, you're saying it out loud, you are the witness. So when you're not doing it, when you're not putting God first, and you're not worshiping only God, and you're looking for the other idols, you're going to be the witness against yourself that you said this. This is the part that I really like. Y'all can relate to this in our part of the world. He went and got a rock. Got a big stone. Put it under a tree. And said, this rock heard everything y'all said. <laughs> it heard y'all. It's going to be a witness against you. talked about the choice. They have a choice. We have a choice. Every day. And it's not a one-time choice. A lot of people think, okay, I can say I join the church and I go and profess their faith and get baptized and walk out the door. Nothing changes. This is a choice we make every day. Every single day. Every decision that comes up. Whenever I'm reading this about the choices, Y'all have all seen the cartoon. Has anybody seen where you're sitting there trying to make a decision, a little devil on this shoulder, feeding and feeding, you got the angel over here, or might be the angel over here, the devil over here, but there's no whispering in. You know, telling you what choice you need to make. We each have a choice. Every time we make a decision, we have a choice. Are we going to serve God? had a choice. Joshua had a choice. Joshua's family had a choice. John, the followers of Jesus, his disciples, they had a choice. Some of Jesus' disciples said, we follow him. I'm going to go my own way. And others said, I will eat the flesh and the blood of Christ. And let that guy 
I've tried to back up in. There's so many times I've been but when I do, you can know forgiveness. And you should start up again. So Pastor Tim Nagin has said choose life. And I want to have him say choose life in Christ. Okay. Okay. Next, after our affirmation of faith, and it's found on page 881, and let's stand so that we can show everyone what we stand for. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
see this blessing. We trust in God, believe and guide us in the truth. Blessed are those who look to God for strength. Let's say our love and message of the Black Father.